Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So Bill, today what we're talking about is rising property tax bills are stinging U.S. homeowners. Yes. But these eight states are doing something about it. So make sure you stay till the end. So you know what states are doing something to the end, <laughs> something about it. So it is getting crazy, okay? Because we could we did video after video on homeowners insurance. Yep. And we know, like especially in Florida, if you're going to go buy a house, make sure you get an insurance quote before you even oh, put an offer. Absolutely. At least when you're in your inspection period, get it right away. That's that's key. Okay. But. Like in Florida, we have a special tax if you're homesteaded. So you could be buying a house and the people could be paying $3,000 a year in property taxes. Yep. And then you buy that same exact house and then you move into it. And then the following year, your taxes go from 3000 to 9000 Correct. So explain to people in Florida, you know, why that happens. Right. So what happens is, let's say, as an example, the house that you purchased was purchased by that current owner uh, 20 years ago. So we have a cap on taxes assessments every year. So there's, you know, it can only go up by 3%. This is the short version. Yeah, that's all we want. Short. Yep, the short, short version. This is the easy version of it. And so now fast forward those 20 years, they go to sell it. Well, their property value still went up. Let's say in the 80s they bought that or 20 years ago they bought that house for, you know, $130,000, but now the house is worth 500. So when they when they close on the deal, you're moving into your house, your we pay our taxes in the rears, so your first tax year is based off of the previous year. Now when you go to your new taxes, it's going to be on the new assessed value of the home. Right, so there could be two houses, exactly the same houses, one next to the other, yep. and one could be paying 3000 and the other one could be paying 10000 in property taxes. Yeah. It happens all the time, but that's unique to Florida. I'm not sure about any other states, but yeah, what no. we're going to talk about is the problem with taxes because it's not, it's not just that you, you have to pay a mortgage, you have to pay insurance, but you, now you have to pay taxes too. And it's not like, well, I'm not going to pay taxes. They're going to just take away your house. I actually did a video that I don't think, like sometimes I feel like nobody truly owns their home because I feel like the county or the state owns a home because if you don't pay your property taxes, they will come and take it away from you. Am I saying it's right that you have to pay property taxes? Yeah, you need roads, you need public services right. and everything. I still think a lot of money gets wasted. But yeah, property taxes are necessary, but some of them get to the extreme because the taxes, you know, with the value of prices going up so fast, taxes went up really, really fast too. Right, and we also had a record number of, of sales. You know, the, the year prior, you know, we were in that six point some odd million transactions. So that's a lot of new assessments in taxes. So taxes definitely went yeah, up. Yeah, because you have to pay for schools, you have to pay for infrastructure and everything. And right. don't get me started like on the impact fees right. for building that house. Oh. They want like $20,000 impact for to build that house. But anyways, that's what we're talking about today is property taxes and the states that are trying to do something about it. In the meantime, do me a favor. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really helps. Give it a thumbs up and share the video and like. Bill, why don't you start us off? All right, if you've owned your home in the US for the last few years, its value has likely risen, maybe significantly. This is generally a good thing since it can help raise your net worth. That's very true. You right. Know, you own a home, your net worth is generally more but in turn can lead to greater, which in turn leads to greater financial security. But there's also a dark side to this. A rise in your home's value can also mean a rise in your property taxes, which can strain your finances. That's what we were just talking about. Exactly. Okay. So I've seen a lot of people's taxes go from 2000 in other states, not Florida, because we're capped in Florida. But I know somebody that the taxes were 2100 and the value went so far up in the last three years, now their taxes are pushing 6000 Because they're, they, they have a millage rate, what it's called. Yep. And the millage rate, you know, even though the millage rate hasn't changed that much. They reassess the They reassess the value. value. Right. Yeah, so we have mills here too. The millage rate or mills, we have those. That's how our, our taxes are calculated. 
um, to pay for you know schools. And I think the article is probably going to go into yeah, all that. Yeah, so let's talk about it. However, several states are trying to offer some relief to homeowners who are already faced with higher interest rates and housing costs. And interest rates, uh, you know, was a killer. People got used to the two, three percent, and those days are over with. And yeah. I don't think they're coming back for a long, long time. Home values influence property taxes. First, it helps to know that your property taxes are calculated. How your property taxes are calculated? Your property taxes are calculated by multiplying multiplying the mill rate that we just talked about. Yep. By your property assessed value. The mill rate on a mill levy is the sum of the rate charged by the county, city, and school district. This rate is determined by fundings needed for jury uh, jurisdictions and total assessed property value of the county. So if the mill, if they raise the mill rate, they used to raise the mill rate every year, but now they're like, hey, we don't have to raise the mill rate, but we could reassess the house. Yeah, in certain jurisdictions, I guess that's a thing. Yeah, so far an example, if three entities co combine three million in funding and the total assessed property value in the county is 100 million, then the mill rate would be 3%. Okay. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty, um, so what happens, Bill, let me ask you a question. What happens if property values go down? Are they running out there to reassess and lower your no. property taxes? No, but I have heard stories that you can request a reassessment. I don't know if anybody's been successful with that, but I'm just saying I've heard stories. I've never seen it actually come to fruition, but. But I don't feel like, okay, but at the same time, since they like spending money on stuff, um, I feel that if they're going to, if values are going to go down, that what they're going to say is, all right, your value did go down. So say we lower the value on paper of your house, say from 250000 to 200000 Okay. But we still need the money. We need more money. We'll just raise the mill rate. Right. You see, they, they get you either way. Right. One way or the other, they're going to get their money. So go for it. <laughs> uh. The assessed value of your property is based on, on market values in your area. These assessments are performed either annually or every few years, and the assessed value is determined using one or more methods, sales evaluation, cost, and or income. So that does happen, but this is where here in Florida, you know, we have the save our homes. So there's a cap on how much they can actually raise your taxes in any given year, which is a good thing because that does help um, mediate because there were times back in the day where you would get those crazy tax bills where you were paying like, let's say $2,000 and then all of a sudden they changed the, the assessed value of your house or they raised the mill rate to where now you're paying, you know, 3,500 and it was or 4,000 to pay for something. Well, let's talk about that real quick with Florida. You know, like people from New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, that are all buying second homes here in Florida, they don't get those benefits. No. So they're going to get hammered with taxes. Right, because it's not your primary. These are, these are geared towards your primary residence. Right. And do, do a lot of people say, hey, I'll just, I will just make that, say, hey, that's my primary residence, but live in New York? But New York has a program, too. And I know some people from New York, and they're like, hey, they have to choose. Either they save taxes yep. in New York or save Three taxes, taxes in Florida. It's not like you can do both places. Right. As yeah, you can't. You're, you're gonna, it's going to be one or the other. So taxes are raising, obviously, but incomes aren't. We've talked about this a bunch. Home prices, as measured by the U.S. National Home Price Index, have gone up 54.3% over the past five years which has contributed to a rise in property taxes for many homeowners. Yes, yeah, it's April 2024. Right, that so that, yep, it, it, that's uh, nationally, not local. That's just the, the national average. That's a crazy amount. That is over, a ridiculous amount of money. So basically, if you base it on that, you don't change your mill, millage rate, but they, the counties and the states reevaluate at that value. You basically, your property taxes in a short period of time have gone up 54% technically. Yeah, technically, on the average. So now, like I said, I don't know about the other states, but if you sold your house, it definitely have gone up. Mm -hmm. So, but what you're saying is other states, they go up regardless of whether or not you're Yeah, we're going to find out what states are doing something about it. So according to the U.S. Census Bureau data, the state and local property tax revenue rose 24% in quarter one of 2019 to quarter one of 2024. Well, according to Tax Foundation 
calculation, state and local property tax collectors per capita rose 21.7% percent from 2016 to 2021. Hmm. That's interesting. Interesting. Uh, after, but after inflation, incomes aren't keeping pace. We all know that. Yep. Real median household income rose just 3.75 percent from April 2019 to April 24. That's why property tax increases can be particularly painful for lower income households and retirees so, on a fixed income. Let's talk about that. Yeah. A lot of people are just on social security or pension, pension. Or, yep. or, or whatever. So if your property taxes went up 50% because your value went up 50%, who cares what your value is of your house if you're not selling it? Right. Like I always said, it doesn't matter what the value is of your house until you sell it. Right, meaning if your house property value goes down, for two, three years. If you're not selling it, it doesn't matter. Right, so, okay. but if somebody's income, if, so your property taxes went from 2,000, say to 4,000. Mm -hmm. But your income only went, Social Security went up for adjusted for inflation maybe, say it went up 3%. Right. That's really not helping you. Yeah, more money out so, than in. Yeah, so now you have to cut back on what, food, power, and not for nothing, I just got my electric bill here. Oh, power bills are insane. My power bill was like $580. Dang. Well, Tanya keeps my house at 70 degrees, but <laughs> it's just in the pool and stuff. But that's a little crazy. Yeah, you know? but, that's pretty high. Uh, but it's everything's going up. That's what I'm saying. If my taxes were up high and then my electricity bill is up high, it's going to kill us. Let's see what states are doing something yeah. about it. States to the rescue. <laughs> While local governments set property tax rates, state government set limits on those rates. But this can have unintended consequences. While homeowners can directly benefit from cuts in property taxes, they might also notice service cutbacks in their community. Well, there's a sacrifice, but I, you know, like I always say this almost on every video, if they budget the money and spend it correctly and don't pay a crazy amount of money for something that's, you know, like, I'll give you guys an example where I used to live. They built, they wanted a new uh, town office. Uh huh. It was like, say, 40 feet by 60 feet. Mm hmm. Ranch style, some offices in there, a couple of bathrooms, handicap ramp. The property was actually donated to them. Mm hmm. Okay, so they want to build this place. $3.6 million. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I'm not exaggerating. $3.6 million. Yeah. There's certain local jurisdictions here that uh, they kind of do the same thing. It's the beautification project. So every city building has to have a specific portion or percentage of their overall budget dedicated to artwork for that building. But the same building, it was like, if to build it, maybe it was... 400,000, 500,000, right. if you want to get really crazy, they're in the millions. Yeah. That's what I mean. A lot of the money gets wasted. Right. Well, I mean, it's look at it's it's, your, it's a beautification project and a specific a lot it's pretty when you're talking like, you know, 5 or 10%, I don't know the specific number, but you know, a couple million dollar project is several hundred thousand dollars for artwork on, you know, a city or, you know, county building to beautify the area. I mean, that's taxpayer dollars, and I think I personally I just feel that that's a, a giant waste. Mm -hmm. The remedy the, uh, to remedy this, some states are offering compensation to local governments when property taxes are cut back. This year, Alabama, Kansas, and Wyoming have enacted laws to limit property tax hikes, according to Realtor.com. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. While Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Missouri and Georgia have certified ballot measures or bailout measures on which voters will decide this year. So okay, that's so pretty we'll cool. We'll see what happens there. New rules in Alabama limit the year over year increase in assessed values on residential and commercial property to 7% while Kansas legislation increases the residential property tax exemption to 75,000. Wyoming's legislation limits annual increases on residential structures and land to 4% and doubles the veterans tax exemption to 6,000 of the assessed value. 
That's that's, that's fine, good. but but seven percent too increase is a little bit high, I think. But <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's kind of what we were like. Even here, we were. That's why we did the cap. What is it? Three point three percent, and because we were doing seven, eight, nine, ten percent increases every year. Yeah, which was stupid. Right, like it was it was crazy. This now that was a long time ago, but you know we've had save our homes for a while. So those are some good states. At least yeah. they're trying something, but they should go down to three percent at least. You know. Yeah, that would make sense to me. But maybe, you know, it's dwindled a little bit over time and combined with some other things. Um, in Arizona, a bailout measure would allow property owners to request refunds in certain circumstances, such as where public nuisance laws are not enforced. Hmm. New Mexico is proposing increased tax exemptions for veterans and an adjustment to the exemption for disabled veterans. Okay. That's good. Yeah, we have that here, too. Um, I, I think for the veterans and disabled veterans and uh, widows. I think that's good. Voters in Colorado will decide whether the cap property tax increases to at four percent, and in Missouri they'll vote on whether child care facilities could be exempt from property taxes. <laughs> Georgians, meanwhile, will vote on whether a home assessed taxes valuation should be capped at a rate of inflation. I like that capped at the rate of inflation. That, that's that's a good one. Unless a local jurisdiction opts out. That's an interesting kind of... Yeah, based on, base on inflation. Interesting, okay. It remains to be seen if many of these measures would become law, but homeowners can take care that these states are trying to help. So those are some cool things that these states are trying to do, and I applaud them for that. But at the same time, I think the taxes have come down if you just spend the money more wisely. I agree with you 100%. You don't need to spend three, four million dollars on something that realistically cost three four hundred thousand dollars right i mean I, you know and i you know i work for the city and we would all every year you know when we had to do our budgets they were always okay the city's aiming to cut back this aiming to cut back that and i mean we got it down to like how many pens we were allowed to use you know on a daily basis how many ink pens on a daily basis and it, it got a little crazy there for a while but you know when we're talking but the you know, somebody has a car allowance of, you know, $100,000 because they're a, a city executive. You know what I mean? It's yeah. And how I much toilet to... paper we were allowed to have at a city facility. It's like, come on, it, spend it. But spending it wisely is is definitely important. And I, I get it. You know, like amphitheaters and parks and all that stuff and libraries. Those are all important things for, you know, community and city. And I, I, I don't disagree with those, but we've got to start watching what we spend um, frivolously. Research projects were always a big one I noticed with uh, the municipalities, you know, just working in the administrative side and it was it was crazy the amount of money we would spend well, on a or, research or, project. Or when they say, hey, you know what, we have all this money in the account left and the year is almost over so we got to spend it so they don't take it away from us next year. Right, use it or lose it. Oh, I hate that. It's a, but use it or lose yeah, it. Yeah, use it or lose it. Yeah, each little city entity had to do that. I remember those so, days. And so basically, let's just recap. Not only do you have to deal with the mortgage and the mortgage rates, yep. insurance, now you have to deal with property taxes too. Right. So no wonder millennials and uh, you know are having a hard time buying houses now and everything. A lot of people are having problems buying houses right now because you have to take the entire picture. You know, you got it's not just your mortgage rate. You know, and when you're looking at your numbers, make sure you're looking at real numbers. Mm -hmm. You know, when your lender is sending out the bills. I've had a couple of my, my customers recently, you know, they go, oh, look, this bill, this is a, I can afford this house, no problem. My lender said I can do this. And when we sit down and we have a consultation before we really start shopping and you start breaking it down, it's like, well, you know, you look at the $150 a month for homeowner's insurance. Oh, well, they've only got you, you know, slated at $50, $75 for property taxes per month, you know, to, yeah. to build them out. And those things, they're just a little low. So you've, you've got to make sure that you're really comparing apples to apples. That's today's video. So if you do me a favor, comment below. Tell us how your taxes are in the location. Just say the state and the tax amount that you pay roughly. So we can compare all these different states and get different people's opinions on property taxes. You have anything to add? Nope. I appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one for sure. Thank you and have a great day.